Good morning, Arcade Faithful. Thank you so much for watching this video. Uh, we're back again. This is another origin story. This is part two. You guys have had such a great response to this, and man, I can't believe y'all are so interested in this story. I've had so many people say, when's part two coming out? When's part two coming out? Well, it's here. If you're watching this, you're watching part two. Now, you may notice I'm in my Scream uh, shirt here. This is a special day here at the Electric Starship Arcade. This is the third annual uh, staff Halloween decorating party day. Now I'm here early. Uh, I've got to get animatronics out. I got to spread all this stuff out of the floor. We got to get the breakfast going. Uh, this is just a really, really cool day where uh, we come together and, and do this uh, and, and decorate the starship. But we've got to finish this video first. Uh, I went through and compiled not all my footage, but just about all of it. Uh, this video will be a little shorter than the last one. Uh, we're going to go over some, some main games, some things I hadn't done before. Uh, we're going to start seeing a tour of what I was thinking the arcade was going to look like with all the games spaced out in the barn and actually starting to get rows in there. And then we're going to take a little, uh, little walk-in tour of the Starship before it got all the uh, games put in it and it got decorated and painted and all that good stuff. So uh, we're going to start, though, with pinball. Now, this one's really, really cool because just about three days ago, me and Dustin went through this pinball machine, put new, uh, fixed some LEDs that had gone out. I put a new solenoid in it that went out on Halloween last year, and which is hilarious that this game went out then. Uh, we put new flipper bats in it because they were old and kind of crusty. But you'll see this is the first time I actually worked on a pinball machine. Now, me and my wife, uh, Cynthia, we had got a pinball machine for the house. We had the Ghostbusters pinball machine that I don't know it's kind of dark back there, but it's back there. Um, we got that one for the house, and uh, that was the only pinball machine that I was scared to even work on them. So this is the first time I got a game at the Texas Pinball Festival. It's the first pinball machine besides Ghostbusters. First one I purchased with the idea of it going into the arcade, and it was Tales from the Crypt by Data East. Um, I loved the old show. Obviously, I loved all the old comics. And, uh, you know, it was uh, really, really neat to get this game. We got it for a song. Everybody, all my pinball friends were like, I can't believe you talked that guy into selling it to you for that. I think he just didn't want to drive. I think he was from Minnesota. He didn't want to drive it all the way back. Had a couple little issues. A little tombstone didn't go up and down. I fixed that, but that's not in the video. What I did do in the video was change out the orange LED or the... DMD, the dot matrix display, those are the little displays where the scoreboard is and you see all the little anim, you know, animations and whatnot. Uh, I put a color one in and I fell in love with putting color DMDs in. If you see any of our old games, unless they have a little teeny little, you know, Batman and Ninja Turtles have a really small display. Uh, so there's not a lot of action on them. So I haven't replaced those, but since this, you know, not only Tales from the Crypt, but Jurassic Park, um, it's other uh, Starship Troopers. Oh my gosh, I can't even think of all. Um, what's the other color display we had? Jurassic Park, Starship Troopers, Tales from the Crypt, Last Action Hero. I put in color displays, and pretty much at one point, it didn't matter what you were looking at. There was a color. Oh, Ghostbusters has a color display in it. I couldn't believe it. that one came out in 2016 and had a red monochrome display. So you'll get to see that. You'll get to see the difference in what LEDs do uh, to a play field and make the game just look so much better. So this is my first foray into that. So here we have my Tales from the Crypt. Uh, this is my little LED panel here that's on it. It's the orange one. It's lost its top row of uh, lights and also the last four rows on the far right side um, so I'm gonna attempt to replace it with a color screen today let's get a new screen to see how it all lights up in comparison Look there. 
Okay, we're gonna turn it on. We got the color display added now. You can see it's all in color and it looks amazing that way. I'm glad I uh, sprung for the color DMD on this because I just think it really adds to the game. Once I put the LED lights in, I think it's really going to make this a uh, smoking machine here. Let it go through a couple of its cycles here so you can see the different colors showing up. Let's go ahead and give it a coin up here. You can see it just totally adds so much to it. And that color display there. video of the play field before I put the LED lights in just to kind of get a visual effect of how those lights all light up see how good it looks with the LEDs the back box I really kind of like the way it lights up right now it's kind of old school and it's not like overly bright or a bunch of funky colors so I might keep it like that or I may put some frosted bulbs in it later we'll see Turn the big light on again. On. I got it, but I wanted it both. the back box just a regular lights except for the colored flashers the cool color DMD and we got the LEDs and all the lights inside I'm pretty happy with it, except for some of the general illumination underneath I actually like those with the just the white colored lights maybe put some frosted LEDs later you see that color DMD is amazing especially with all these LED lights Pretty awesome, huh? I can get to see some of Cynthia's pinball skills there as well. Uh, let's go look at it. I mean, there's not much to look at because it, that's dark right now uh, in the back there, but we'll check it out and see uh, see what we see here. Um, it's going to be out later today because we got it all ready for all our Halloween stuff, all our decorating and everything. So here it is. This is the uh, Tales from the Crypt. It is ready to go. New flipper bats, new silicone rubber around that. Um, yeah, it's not even on. Did have this topper. We added a topper. I've meant to do a whole lot more to this game. And one day maybe I will. I'll like to put some moss and some spider web and some stuff like that. Uh, and, you know, just make it look even creepier. But, uh, yeah, we try to only pull her out once a year. You know, or once or twice a year. She's was she went down on Halloween last year, so this game hasn't been on the floor in about a year. So it's kind of fantastic uh, to see uh, that game going to come back out. Look, Halloween props. Be putting up animatronics all day today. I'm so excited. I'm talking more about the Halloween video than I am about this Origins video. So that's that one. The next thing we're going to see is punch out now punch out came in with uh, if you watch the first video i had this really killer score uh where i just got a whole bunch of games uh like really good classics and punch out looked pretty good cabinet on it uh to be honest i didn't have to do just a ton of work but uh you can start you can see this this game has two monitors all right and the top monitor uh had a sink issue and and both of them needed to have capacitors put in them 
Uh, so I did that. And then when I got that going, you'll see that there is uh, all the colors on the characters are bad. And those are bad character proms, if I remember correctly. This video was shot a while back. I may mention it. Uh, and then you just see it slowly get working. Uh, since then, I put artwork on the side and dressed it up a little bit. So check it out. Well, today starts the uh, journey on Punch-Out. As you can see here, we have a Punch-Out. It's not in bad shape. Uh, it doesn't have any little side art. Uh, Team Olden's gonna have to be replaced. CPO, that's a little bit of damage there. I don't know if it's worth replacing or not. I probably will, just because I'm particular about sort of things. Uh, two issues we got here is we have uh, it's a two monitor setup in the punch out. There's Sanyo EZs. I've already done a cap kit on one for the um, Donkey Kong, but as you can see, the monitors are shot. The top monitor, if you let it run for a while, it'll slowly seep in. Uh, bottom monitor, you can actually see it play. I'm, uh, it is on free play. see glass joe does come up and it's playable there's no sound the volumes on the monitor actually i've seen glass joe he's there uh he's not there at the moment so like i said we got some graphics coming in and out and uh pretty rough but controls seem to work uh, anyway you can see you can or you can't see Glass Joe moving behind our little Mac here. But anyway, uh, needs work. All right, we have progress. Top monitor is up and running and looking really good. Still don't have volume coming out of it. Still got a marquee that isn't lighting up. And my color proms are bad, but progress is progress. I'll take anything at this point. More progress today. Ladies and gentlemen, Glass Joe. Oh, the colors back. Pretty cool. Okay, so punch out this is a classic and i wanted this so bad uh and i'm so glad we got it when we when we did because i've only seen i don't know five or six of them come up for sale since then they've all been astronomical broken tore up way worse condition than ours was when we got it and they're all just super expensive now i gotta tell you a memory about this game um getting chills man y'all know me if i start talking about something nostalgic something i love i start getting chills but uh the um uh, i lived in uh, my great grandmother i'd stay with her in white settlement and there was an ice cream shop in the 80s okay so this ice cream shop was a nostalgic thing from like the 50s but it was in the 80s so it was a you know kind of like what we are now this is what this was then and uh, it had an arcade in the back and it was i can remember it it was boxed off and had its own door and it had a little glass with some shade on it so it was dark in there where the rest of the ice cream shop was was relatively bright and uh you'd go in there and it was so dark and so cool and it just had two rows of games going down and punch out was one of them and i saw this kid playing punch out and he could do so much better than me he was an older kid uh, I was very young at the time. I was probably six, maybe. And I'd get my ice cream, mint chocolate chip, and go in here and watch this kid play punch out. And he was amazing. And this is the first time I ever saw this, guys. I realized you could sneaky cuss in, in video games. He put initials ASS -S, right there, ass on the screen. I had never, at the time, I may have never seen what was considered a curse word in print you know so i see this and I'm like oh my gosh so from that moment on anytime i ever played punch out i put ass in the screen so i thought that was kind of neat uh I, I don't know why but but even our punch out right now i have the top spot in it and it's ass uh so 
uh, humorous as that may be, I don't know who's coming in here and trying to take my top spot, but they have literally put tit all over the screen. So it's just straight tit and ass all over <laughs> punch out. So anyway, I thought y'all would find that interesting. Let's go look at it. So I, um, I really did love this game, you know, and I haven't even played it that much lately. It's, it's kind of in the back of the arcade now. Um, we've just rotated stuff around and that's just where it happened to go. My God, my hair is so crazy. Y'all know me. I don't really keep long hair. I haven't had hair this long in probably 20 years. So, uh, let's check it out. Punch out. How cool is that? Still looks good. And you know, it's been pretty much a workhorse. Uh, this is the first game that I put a little, um, a little quarter in there, you know, and it glows. And I thought I was just hot stuff putting these uh, quarters, uh, these little pictures of quarters there. I never did replace that CPO because I just like the way the original one has some reflectiveness to it. I put a piece of tape across here forever. We had like a kind of a racing flag tape there, but it's got kind of wore out over time. This one's starting to wear all it is Gorilla Tape, guys. There's not a whole lot of magic to that. We did put side art on it. It, uh, you know, Punch Out never had the best side art, but if you know anything about me, I really enjoy putting side art in, even when you can't see it back there. Well, let's see if I can even climb back here, get back there to see it. Anyway, boring footage there, but there you go. There's Punch Out in all its glory. Still on the arcade floor. It's actually a really good uh, representation of the game and, uh, you know, put new team molding on it. And uh, it's great, great cabinet there. So anyway, Punch Out. Uh, the next one we're going to talk about is a very special one to me that I thought there's so many games in this arcade that I thought, man, I am never going to own that game. Uh, where am I going to get it? Who's going to sell it to me? That's too expensive. I can't believe we have this. All these feelings, right? And it's Tron. So sit back and enjoy, <clears throat> excuse me, and enjoy us waking Tron up for the first time. Big breakthrough here. Tron is alive unbelievable and it looks really good holy smokes how crazy Lord, is that that's incredible so it was the power supply the whole time it was the power supply it's power supply well there's a what it is is there's a a watchdog and the watchdog i turn the light on here something was going south on the power supply it's probably an old rotted battery or something messed it up, but long story short, we jumped that sucker with that thing, switched it, and we tapped into the power here. So, yeah, we got Tron working. Unbelievable. Somebody has a free play kit in this. It is two o'clock in the morning on the dot. We have Tron up and running. We threw the black light in it. We got the front light activated and it is looking really awesome actually. Look how cool that is. Take, go ahead and coin up real quick just so we can see it running. Hopefully. Hopefully you get the bike. Because <laughs> our spinner nope. for some reason is out. But how neat is that? Alright, Tate, check it out. Got the arm working. Look. Oh, oh. got him, coach. Awesome. Ron has made it into the garage. See the side art is pretty rough. The lower fluorescent is super faded. It's almost white. This fluorescent is, or black light is almost white as well. Monitor looks great. So does the uh, bezel and the little cowl in the back, but rough side art on this side, hard to see. So this is what Tron's going to look like in the dark. I uh, still need to hardwire in um, 
my lights, my lighted T molding. As you can see, I've put a little mod in the back to make the rear trans light glow different colors. And what you can't see is how beautiful and brilliant this is. It's just not going to show up in uh, regular camera light. Yeah, I think it came out really good. Turn the LEDs over so they wouldn't hot spot. And uh, you get that really cool Tron glow effect. Alright guys, I completed Tron this morning. I'm going to turn it on real quick so you can see it all light up. I used hollow T-molding from T-molding.com and I put LED lights in but I didn't like the way they hot spotted so I actually turned them around backwards inside the T-molding to kind of give it that look of uh, just kind of a straight line, you don't get all the hot spotting. The new plastics on the front and the inner art are from Phoenix Arcade, it's really the camera won't pick up the uh, brilliance in the color here, which is a shame because it looks white, but I'm in person that's like a bright blue and bright orange, a lot like the lower uh, plastic. The mod in the back credit goes to Jason Arcade on the uh, on YouTube. That is uh, LEDs are fluctuating different colors back there, kind of give it a a pulsing effect, which I thought was a really pretty neat touch. Um, hope y'all enjoy it. Wow, sometimes looking at that Tron, uh, I just am amazed at how it turned out. The uh, That game when it came in, if you look at the previous video, you may be able to see it. It was falling apart in four different directions. I had straps holding the bottom to get it to work. And I love the beginning of this video because I'm so green. I have no idea what the hell I'm talking about, which, you know, isn't too much further from now, but I know a little bit more. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's so neat to hear me not know what I'm talking about and how I just magically got this thing working, you know? <laughs> and it's just a, a, um, a switching power supply from Arcade Shop with this little adapter board for MCR games, uh, which is like a three board stack. I still don't know what I'm talking about. Midway game, um, things like Tapper and um, Tron, and maybe Kickman or something. I have no idea. I, maybe Kickman's not included in that. But anyway, Domino Man, somewhere. Some of those games, those Midway uh, games. Uh, let's go look at Tron now. You know, that's bittersweet because those LEDs look so beautiful on the side, and I'm so glad this footage is here. And even our early arcade footage, we came into the Electric Starship. I used to have Tron when you first walked in the door. Uh, and those LED T molding was glowing, which was an absolute nightmare to put in. Uh, I don't know if you've ever loaded LEDs into a that mount of mount of hollow T molding, uh, but and I it wrapped around from the bottom. I even cut slots on the bottom to make the bottom glow. Um, but yeah, it is extremely difficult to get the LEDs in. I had to use KY jelly. Uh, like we had to lube the uh, LEDs to get them in there. So anyway, they st they glow. I mean, you can't even see them anymore. So it just looks like white T mold, bubbly white T molding. In. Let's go take a look. Um, I did turn Tron on this morning because it's an easy turn on. I have to turn on rows of games for it. And the reason I wanted to is so you could actually see, you know, how time has taken its toll. If you look really close. I don't even know if you can see it, but those LEDs are actually still lighting up in there. You can't see it on film, uh, but it's not near the glow. It's not any glow pretty much like it used to be. Also, another thing too, um, this was these brilliant colors. If you look over there, you can see the color, but the fluorescent light has faded those colors. They're not as bad as the whited out light they were before. They have faded them out. Uh, even this fluorescent down here, you can see where it's heavier here. It's faded the color out of those. Uh, and they were brand new three years ago. So, you know, that's just a testament to time uh, and what light does to these arcade games. You know, I, f I did these inserts here. A lot of this is from Phoenix Arcade. I never replaced this. Uh, the light mod in the back where the lights change still uh, work. You can see those kind of blinking. It gives it almost an animated feel to it. Uh, original glass uh, marquee and then the side art. 
if you saw in the videos, you know, they were, it was butchered and uh, it's not on here. We have nice side art still. This game's still quality, quality, quality game. Um, and it's been sturdy in the Starship. We have these nice little toppers that are always getting knocked around because people want to put their beer on them. And, uh, and I even put a little neon there behind it so we got we have recognizers all over the building they're kind of hidden everywhere let's look in the uh we're big uh tron fan you see one hiding behind shinobi there and then i think this is kind of fun they all may not have noticed all the recognizers in the building which you know we have to check that out watch this one this one's really going to sneak up on you guys let me see if y'all recognize the recognizer all right, we're in Starship Theater. Tell me when you see it. Oh my God, look at that. It's right behind me. Totally snuck up on you, didn't it? Anyway, that's kind of fun. So that's Tron. What's the next one about? Oh, I know what the next part of this video is gonna be about. Let me turn that back off. It is going to be about, too long. No, it's gonna be about uh, conversions. So I'm gonna show you several games in the next part of the video here and it's going to be about games when i got them they were converted to something else and then i converted them to something else uh if it didn't go back to an original i try to improve it and make it better so i picked up aliens in a xenophobe cabinet the cabinet's in really pretty good shape uh i actually have the piece that's chipped out of there but other than that it's pretty strong Kind of neat. Uh, I already have aliens, so we'll see. Okay, today starts a journey. We're taking an old busted Galaga cabinet. It's got some redeeming value, uh, but we're actually going to restore this back to uh, Gapless uh, Galaga 3. Anyway, as you can see, I don't have anything going on here except for the artwork is pretty decent, which would be a shame to trash but uh inside we got just kind of a fun mess but uh it begins here well it was a nightmare but i got the monitor and mr do up and it's actually really sharp really good looking um won't be mr do for long but while it is it is Fighting crime in the most literal sense of the word, converting this back to gauntlet. So, four games, four conversions. Uh, the first one we talked about there was Xenophobes. We're gonna go look at that first. Now, Xenophobe, I actually saw somebody with a chair sitting down playing Xenophobe, but I'm not sure Xenophobe gets much play. It doesn't have much of an attract screen, which, you know, that's a design flaw in my eyes. But uh, this was one that I just think is such a unique looking cabinet. It has such a unique control scheme, has a unique way it plays with three different little screens on it. So I was excited to bring it back to Xenophobe. Now, it was an aliens cabinet first. So let's look and see why I didn't want to make it aliens because obviously Xenophobe stopped making money at some point and someone converted to aliens, but I had already made an alien. So this is a Daddy East cabin, which has that cool curve to it. And uh, I made a custom bezel for it, you know, cause there wasn't really a whole lot. Aliens was kind of a kit game. So there wasn't a whole lot out there. I forget who made this CPO, but I thought it was really cool. Uh, has the alien, the Xenomorph there come through and it, it just turned it with cool blue pink molding or blue T molding. I thought that came out really, really cool. So we had an aliens, uh, therefore, I uh, had an extra aliens board, which we honestly, we traded it for that and a little bit of cash for that uh, stun runner. So that turned out good, but we turned aliens in its xenomorph cabinet back to xenomorph. And uh, wow, it, I thought it came out great. We got us a new marquee. It had the old glass. It's pretty faded. I think that's supposed to be red, but uh, I had to find a really nice, and we did, we found a really nice, um, 
control panel. And we got it with all the original joysticks, super nice. Uh, they had all had the wiring cut between them. So it took me about 45 minutes to redo all the wiring back to make it work. So there you go. That is an original Xenomorph or Xenophobe cabinet. Um, and look, I think this is neat. I kept this on there. Look, it used to be property of Aladdin's castle. Isn't that cool? I love little things like that. Sometimes I'll leave a registration sticker or something like that on them. Uh, the next game in that lineup of games there that had uh, a conversion to it was uh, Galaga. It's supposedly Galaga, but I wanted to make a gapless. You know, crazy part is we still, to this day, don't have an original Galaga cabinet on the floor. Um, we have Galaga on the floor because you have to, or you're not <laughs> really great. But it's in our uh, 20th anniversary edition there. So Galaga gets played a ton here and on a big 25 inch monitor. But uh, the gapless, oh my God, it turned out beautiful. Now there was a company I think called Pacific Arcades, I might be getting that wrong, um, that redid this Galaga, or, yeah, Pacific Arcades redid this Galaga or this gapless artwork and I bought the whole kit from them. Thank God I did, because this isn't available anymore. And this has some of the most beautiful art. And this, if you looked at that ga Galaga cabinet, the front was blown out really bad, uh, where the kick plate is down there. And I redid that. Um, these corners were destroyed. That's why there's corner protectors on there because of all the Bondo work I had to do. But I think this came out really, really cool. And if you look at other gapless, go to other arcades, look at the gapless. The original control panel art was just ugly. It was just like lines. It didn't have any of this uh, tribal artwork here to connect this game to Galaga. You know, Galaga has kind of these tribal designs on it. If you see there and uh, you know, in here and in here. And uh, Gapless just did not look like a successor to Galaga at all. So that, they kind of tied that together. They tied it right into the bezel work there. Uh, even this is slightly different, this back uh, panel here. So this is just a game. <laughs> I thought when I finished this, that I may have a little bit, I was actually proud, you know, I, I had a pride moment there. They even like wrapped the team molding up and around and underneath, uh, or I'm sorry, the artwork, a little schmutz on it there. They wrapped that artwork underneath the team molding there. And uh, you know, this this side piece was supposed to be black and man, I, this game just came out so cool. I finally put a new monitor in it because the monitor was always kind of fady. And uh, what do you think guys? How'd that one turn out, right? That's a pretty good restore or uh, I don't know what to call it. It, it wasn't, it wasn't uh, gapless before. We're actually gonna look at another game like that. Now I mentioned Mr. Do, and if you've been to the arcade, we don't have Mr. Do on the floor. Um, this came in as a Gottlieb cabinet. Now Gottlieb made games like uh, Qbert, most, uh, most recognizable. And this was a Qbert cabinet, and I recognize that. But what's rarer than Qbert is a game called Mad Planets, and a really, really fun game. And that is what this is right here. Now I have the Cubert and the Mad Plants together. So you can see that uh, they are the same cabinet, but I turned that Mr. Do that was just a big green cabinet into Mad Planets, which is a super rare game. Both these games are getting rare now. Um, anyway, you can still see, or no, you can't, but there's Mr. Do burn in on the monitor, uh, but you can't see it when you're playing the game. And I stenciled the side so you get these great big cool arrows. If you haven't played this game, guys, you're really missing out. It's got a unique sk control scheme, a lot like Tron. It has the spinner and the uh, you know big Tron flight stick. This this stick is different than Tron's. Uh, forever, I had one that kind of leaned forward. That was a remake that they make. Uh, Suzo Hap sells, but this one I found actually for ten dollars at the arcade swap meet if you find that video you'll see me actually find that joystick and it is on there now so mad planets and then the crime fighters that i had was actually an original gauntlet cabinet and here it is it's front and center right now because i wanted to give it a place to uh, put new side art on it cynthia sanded that maybe i'll find pictures one day of her doing that 
front art. It's actually his brand new art. This old game, the monitor, even though it has a ton of burn in, you see it is so beautiful. So this game came out really good too. That was a great restore there. And uh, yeah, that was uh, that's kind of the fun of the arcade is being able to restore some of these games back to what they were. Uh, and I try to make them look just like they did uh, when they came out. So, so finally, let's get to the next to last part of this video. And this is where the barn starts shaping up to look like the future electric Starship Arcade. You can start seeing the rows develop. Um, man, this is really, really neat. This is where you start getting that vibe. Like, I'm really gonna do this. I'm really gonna put an arcade together. I can't keep track of my age. Okay, it's June 3rd. We got the arcade barn looking better. Uh, we start over here, kind of work our way around. Covered up games or finished ones. A little path through here. Uh-uh, no. No, no. See a view of all of it. <laughs> I wanted to take a quick video of the arcade. Here we have San Francisco Rush. I have an old deer hunter that hopefully one day get turned back into a killer instinct. I have a big blue here. Hopefully be a street fighter. We're starting on the rougher side. Here we got a blitz. Need some work. We have one of three Galaga cabinets. Landa. Put them all together here one of these days. Here we got a Stargate. Needs artwork on the side. Should be up and working, but we got a bad monitor in it. So we travel around to the other side here. Another Galaga cabinet. Galaga cabinet that is up and running, but it's a multi-cade. House of the Dead 2 works just great. Centipede, Ghost and Goblins, X-Men 4 player that I've been working on, Outrun, Spiders, Up and Running 4 player Neo Geo cabinet, I've already restored that one. This is a Fighter Capcom cabinet, needs some cabinet work. Monitor work, probably going to be a Street Fighter or something like that. Got another Blitz cabinet, it's in a Universal Midway. We got a Dynamo cabinet, it was a Mortal Kombat 3, an Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3. I'm take the boards out of that, combine them with four. We got a fully working Tron, just needs cabinet work and uh, artwork and whatnot fixed on it. It's great. A terribly not working Defender, but it was a really nice cabinet for 50 bucks. Guitar Hero. Got a little Xbox kiosk there. And we'll start over here. Target Terror. It's up and running. Silent, silent Scope that works great. A big pile of junk. Arctic Thunder. Area 51, maximum force. And we have a, what was a complete heap showcase cabinet. Uh, Area 51, maximum force is the one that uh, my brother and I did a lot of work on. We're still working on it. Star Wars Trilogy, Mortal Kombat 4. It's a quasi cade cabinet, we'll put an Xbox in. And we got Car and Evil. Big Buck Hunter, Joust, Asteroids Deluxe, Need for Speed Underground, a totally redone Donkey Kong, 
I've done the artwork on it as well. It's uh, from the ground up nice again. Xevious, that needs a lot of work. <laughs> Battle zone that's up and running, just needs a step put on there. Buck Rogers, this will be a good Simpsons one day. <laughs> right now it's just junk. And a Super Mario Brothers. And we have other ones back at the house. Today in the Electric Starship, we just got some fighting games going. Uh, first of all, we have Marvel vs. Capcom. And then we have Champion Edition Street Fighter 2. Right now it's on Street Fighter 2 Hyper Fighting Anniversary Edition. And Mortal Kombat 4. Nice thing about Mortal Kombat 4 is you can actually change it to Mortal Kombat 3 on the fly. So if you want to play that, I'll change it right back by hitting the 1 and the 2. Oh my gosh, really cool footage there. Um, two things I notice that is, is pretty awesome about that. One, there's so many games in that, some of that video that I've never seen the light of day in the Electric Starship. There's uh, a rush, there was a, some sort of uh, deer hunter that was supposed to be the Killer Instinct. There's a little flash of our Killer Instinct at the end where I, like we drove all the way to Houston, like, west of Houston to pick up our Killer Instinct. Uh, uh, which was complete and working. It's been a good game for us, actually. But uh, there's Stargate in there. There's multiple different Galagas, which we, you know, we just watched that portion of where I turned that one of those cabinets into Gapless. Uh, you see the Tron before it's, you know, fixed up. You see, uh, you'll see the big blue. Uh, that's now it's our, uh, yeah, it's our still our Street Fighter uh, champion, our uh, Grandmaster Challenge, actually. Uh, you'll see that in there uh, with like a hyper fighting or a Pandora box or something in it. But you'll see it even before it was redone. Um, just tons of Buck Rogers in there that's never seen the light of day along with um, the uh, Target Terror, that big giant thing that's still sitting in the same spot in that barn. Uh, so it was really neat to see the barn footage as the games started getting collected there and just see games that haven't been on the floor for a while or games that have long been sold. That Xbox kiosk never made it, the big brown wooden quasi cave that had a billion buttons on it, it uh, that never made it in uh, really really neat uh, I, I, I like that footage a lot just from the standpoint of games we do have games we don't have um, so uh, the second thing like I said I notice is right there right before we go through those fighting games you hear the mention of electric starship arcade for the first time I believe in any of these videos um, I guess we had named it then, uh, which is again, amazing to me. Uh, so now that we've named the arcade, where are we gonna put it? This is the, the final part of this video. This is the walkthrough of this building uh, before we tore up carpets. I think we were meeting a general contractor that we ended up letting go before he ever got started that day. But uh, I'm walking through the bowels of the starship before a game ever was here when it was still a former physical therapy center and then a former auction house. So let's look and see what that looks like. Okay, here's the humble beginnings of the electric starship arcade. It's got two big opening doors here. We are gonna be, this is our little foyer. We're gonna be putting two doors right there at the end of it. Party room on this side. This is where we're gonna be taking the monies and uh, this is basically the command center here, over here, party room. Pretty awesome. As you go through these doors here, you'll be entering the main, uh, kind of the nostalgic part of the arcade. It'll be through here. There's also a kind of a dry storage room here. As we walk around here, you can see the restrooms will be on this wall over here. There's one for the men's, one for the women's. 
There's Cynthia out there. And then this will be the main part of our arcade area out here with the tables. We'll have a projection screen on that far end where Uncle Sam is. Uh, coming around the back side here, this will be our board game tabletop game room. Kind of fun. Here's the other side where the office is. All this carpet will be coming up and these walls will be painted. Over here, we're going to have some, uh, we've got some smaller LAN party rooms for computer gaming and also maybe some console gaming as well in these little rooms. And then this is just a wide open space here. We'll have air hockey and pinball machines and then also obviously video games, arcade machines. Coming back over this direction. This is our kitchen here. This area right here is going to be a bar. So as you can kind of see that, this will be the kitchen area, which is actually pretty nice already. Not just have to add some appliances. And then back here is kind of exciting through these double doors will be our storage area. So you can see there's a, quite a bit of storage in our workshop for our games. So it goes back here pretty deep. And there's some windows obviously to see into the arcade. Which is pretty neat too. So I can't wait to get started. Getting the contractor out here in just a little bit. We're gonna talk about getting some of this carpet up, getting these walls painted. And uh, there's not really a whole lot of construction work to be done. So, pretty exciting. All right, well, I stepped outside because I wanna take that same tour. I want us to see what the Starship looks like now. I got all the lights on. This is not how you usually see the Starship. I uh, usually have all the lights down and the arcades are lighting it up like a dark arcade should be. Anyway, so instead of auction house on the door, it says electric starship. And you'll notice it says 21 plus after 8 p.m. Remember that guys, as our hours on there, we have our little sign hanging at night, all this kind of glows up the windows there. Uh, but let's go inside. I'm sure Gunner will be happy to see me back indoors. There's my boy. Better. look at the camera all right back inside all right so here when you first saw in that video you saw that there was a wall there with a door well that's no good because you can't fit big big fat arc I almost said a bad word big fat arcades through it so i had to tear that wall down i don't know if you can kind of see where it was there but we did a pretty good job of covering it up uh now we got the movie posters in there remember i said this was going to be a party room guess what guys it became a party room we throw parties in here all the time. We had five parties over the weekend in here. Uh, my daughters painted these beautiful stripes on the wall. I wish they were out the th whole arcade, but I remember them painting them like the day before we had our first party. We were still working on it. You know, a little black lights, more black lights up there. Remember I said this was going to be dry storage? It is dry storage. Look at that. This is where we... And, you know, keep the sodas and the cotton candy and all the bees and whatnot. So there you go. And then we are in that big main part of the arcade. The only difference is we expanded. We created Starship Theater just this year and we worked our way into this. We had bands all weekend and now we're about to put animatronics up on the stage for Halloween. But goodness gracious, it's so beautiful in here, you know. We're proud of our little expansion here. That was our second expansion, believe it or not. But then you're in that big part. Remember all this blue carpet? We tore all that up. Uh, we did that ourselves. It was a pain. As I said, there is a bar. Uh, we did build the bar exactly where I thought we would. So I'm kind of happy about some of the things where I was like, this is gonna be this and this is gonna be this. That was like when I was first walking through here. This is the vision. Uh, I took the wood grain out of the bathrooms, took the live, pray, love, or whatever was off that wall. Uh, and here the bathrooms turned out really nice. Uh, hey, look, I'm in the mirror. Anyway, so bar, bathrooms, everything kind of went to the way it was supposed to. And then this big old space is just chock full of games. Uncle Sam that used to be on the back wall is a projection screen now where we play 
football and nostalgic videos and all kinds of fun stuff. Now this is where it gets a little different. Um, most of the time you don't see this with lights on. My dog is ready to play, look at him. <laughs> not yet, Gunner, not yet. This was gonna be our D&D &D and board games room. And we had a D&D &D group for a little bit and that was fun, no more though. And then we never did turn this into a board game room. We turned this into Beat 'em Up Alley. And uh, this is just kind of where our beat 'em up games are. And uh, you know, we put this, me and Ryan actually hung this faux brick. My mom and I actually carried it in. I wish there's footage of that somewhere. There probably is. Anyway, so we put the faux brick up and then Isaac came in here and painted all this great art. It lights up really cool with the black light. There's videos on that. But uh, anyway, yeah, this was turned into Beat'em Up Alley. And you can see that just the acoustics in this room, it can be so loud and you can come in here and it's just punching and fighting. Uh, so <laughs> I love that. So it did not become the board game room. The two rooms here, there's one hiding behind guitar here on this side and one on this side. This became a storage room. This also became a storage room. Now this one, eventually has got another plan. It'll be our last expansion in this building. We'll go into this room, but it's not gonna be a LAN or console game. It'll actually be more arcade games. Our console games we put out here. And uh, we were originally gonna have like this barn door right here. You're gonna be able to check out games from the office and play them right here or in one of these rooms. And we end up getting these minis. Now I'll tell you what, these little guys our workhorses. We have the Nintendo, the Turbo Graphics, and on this side, we have the Sega Genesis and the Super Nintendo Minis. Now, they haven't been modded or anything like that, but these get so much play. Oh my God, I could go back and do it all. I may just put little minis throughout this whole place. I know y'all would love that, wouldn't you? And uh, anyway, and they, uh, gosh, I can't pull them off the floor. They've been such a hit and people love sitting here and just playing old Nintendo all day. The kitchen became the kitchen, just as it was supposed to. Many uh, thousands of hot dogs and popcorn has ran through this place. And uh, yeah, really cool. Uh, what else was in that video? Oh, our office became the office. We had a window there. We took money for the first weekend through the window and then we just killed the idea because it was easier just to take it all up here at the bar. And uh, yeah, little office here. It's messy. A new cotton candy machine this weekend. Workstation. Yeah, fun stuff. And then uh, what else was left? Oh, last thing, last but not least, the back room. You remember all that space that was in the back room? There's no space back there anymore. I mean, it is just storage be damned back here. You know, we have all our chemicals and whatnot, spray paint and everything. And then it's just like storage for as far back as you can see. So a lot of future games, a lot of future projects there. And uh, I don't know, it should be, uh, should be pretty fun. So anyway, I hope y'all enjoyed this video. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed going back and seeing everything that uh, we've done here. And uh, I'm glad y'all enjoy this so much. Thank you for watching this. Remember to like and subscribe. We have so many cool videos coming out. We had two auctions this month. We had, uh, you know, we have got all kinds of new games on the floor. Some me and Autumn restored. Some are just new. And um, Halloween is coming. I can't wait to do that video. So until next time, thank you for watching. We'll see you on the next one.